In this video, we'll discuss ways to extract additional information from renderers to use in post-processing. In previous sections, we've covered kinds of elements that can be used to build scenes, but all we've been doing with those scenes is rendering standard colorized images. The Raymarch Render 3D operator and other render operators can also output other types of images containing different types of data about each pixel. These other sources of data are called output buffers. They're equivalent to output buffers in traditional render tops. We're starting with the same standard render setup that we've used in previous sections with a Raymarsh Render 3D, a look at camera, and a point light. First, we'll set up an SDF. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a generalized polyhedron SDF and connect this to the renderer. Set the shape to truncated icosahedron and the radius to one. Then create a combine operator and insert that between the polyhedron and the renderer. Next, create a helix SDF and set the axis to Z, the radius to three, and the spread to one, and connect that to the second input on the combine. Then on the camera, set the FOV angle to 60, the position to 0, 1.37. On the renderer, we're currently only using the first output. Now, the second output uh, usually also has the same image as the, the first one, so we're just going to skip that one for now. But the third output contains depth data. So create a null top and connect that to the third output, the depth output. And I'm going to connect this to this output preview here. Now, if you aren't seeing any output there, if it's uh, solid black or transparent, uh, make sure on the Raymarch render on the outputs page, make sure that enable depth output is switched on. It should be on by default, and most of the tools that we'll be using automatically switch those settings on, but sometimes you may need to do it manually if something isn't showing up. This output contains a depth value for each pixel. Now it looks like it's just solid white, but that's because most of the depths are larger than one. So in the top viewer, we're going to right click and enable display pixel values. And then if you look at the pixel values down at the bottom there, you'll see that it's getting different numbers at different points, depending on how far away the surface is for each of those points. So there is a component that helps with scaling this to a more useful range. So open the palette again and create a depth map operator and connect the output from the depth into that and then add a null top to the end. And we're going to connect that to this preview panel. The depth map scales the values into a more useful range. By default, it's scaling from a range of 0 to 20, which isn't quite far enough to cover our area. So click the snapshot range button. And that will look at the incoming image and find the furthest point and the closest point and automatically set the range based on that and then scale that to a 0 to 1 range. Now you can try adjusting the gamma setting to control how it scales values within that range and the function setting um, you can also use with uh, an exponent or a square root 
which is just another way to control how the, those values kind of taper off as they get further away. Now that we've got an image with depth values scaled into a zero to one range, we can use that to simulate lens focusing. So create a Luma blur operator, connect the first input to the renderer's main color output and the second input to our depth image, and then connect that to our output. Then on the Luma Blur, you can adjust the white filter width and increase that. And you'll note how it's blurring the areas that are further away while keeping the closer ones unblurred. Now there are some bugs in the Luma Blur operator that can happen when the values in the depth map are in ranges that it isn't expecting. Um, which can result in some kind of black rectangles showing up in the output. So as a way to try to avoid that on the depth map, you can click this clamp to zero to one range, and that'll just make sure that all the values stay within that range. Next, we'll be looking at the world position output. Open the palette and create a world position map component and connect that to the renderer's world position output, which is the fifth one here. Then on the Raymarch Render 3D, make sure that enable world position output is switched on. This is one of those examples where it doesn't get automatically switched on, so you need to remember to do it manually. Add a null top to the output of that so you can see the result. And then I'm going to connect that to this preview panel. Now for this output, each pixel's value is the x, y, z coordinates of wherever that point on the surface is that the ray hit for that pixel. Similar to the depth map, it applies scaling from a range. And it has a similar snapshot range feature that you can use. But if you want to see the values without any scaling applied, you can set all the ranges to 0 to 1. Or there is a different component that you can use that doesn't do any scaling. So to create that, select the renderer and make sure nothing else is selected. And then use the Alt-Shift-R shortcut to open the Editor Tools menu. Open the Select Output Buffer submenu, and this gives you a list of all of the different types of output that this renderer can support. So we're going to go with World Position. That will create a Render Select operator here. And if you connect that, you'll see that it is just grabbing that same World Position without doing any scaling on it. Next, we're going to access the Surface Normals. So select the renderer again and open the Editor Tools menu. And under Select Output Buffer, we're going to go with Normal. So this will automatically switch on that output on the renderer and create another of these Render Select operators. I'm going to add a null to the end here and then connect that up. This output for each pixel gives the X, Y, and Z parts of the direction that that part of the surface is facing. So you'll notice for these flat areas here, those values are pretty constant across that whole region. But for curved parts like this, you get more of a gradient as the direction of the surface kind of wraps around. So the normals output is useful for detecting edges or corners. And to do that, you can add a, an edge top after that on the normal output. So that will give us kind of a highlight of all the areas where an angle changes suddenly. Now, it doesn't necessarily handle 
continuous blend areas that well um, because the there isn't really a hard um, edge within that uh, since there are no kind of corners on there but it will give you the output the uh, outline of where the surface is so you can try using different settings in the uh, edge top and trying doing different channels or you can do um, HSV conversion before that if you want to uh, try different ways to kind of highlight the edges that you're looking for. So that's it for this section. We'll cover the other output buffers in upcoming videos. Stay tuned for the next video in the series and check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.